On a more positive note, we see some pushback from uh, the Tea Party on a petition to prosecute Eric Holder. And it's gotten over a million signatures. This is reported on InfoWars. Actually, Tea Party Net, the Tea Party dot net is the site where you can find this petition. A Tea Party group that launched a petition drive to prosecute U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder reported on its Facebook page that it has nearly a million signers and the movement is growing by the minute. This is a quote from the petition. A person is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. That's not the case, however, in, the Obama, in, in Obama's America when he needs to manipulate the people for his own political expediency. Who can he always rely on to be his hatchet man? None other than Attorney General Eric Holder. Do you stand with us in calling for his resignation and prosecution? And nearly a million people have answered yes. And it's not just that pushback. But we also now have some of the people who are being victimized and having their freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. The First Amendment gives us freedom of religion. And some of the people who are being persecuted by the U.S. military are now working to get an amendment, a good amendment, put into the next NDAA. You know, we all talk about the NDAA. Nobody had ever heard of it until we had the section that takes in, has indefinite detention and warrantless, uh, trans, uh, warrantless trials for people. But uh, now we have uh, the Family Research Center, who has been the target of vilification from the Southern Poverty Law Center as well as the U.S. military, and they have a coalition of conservative leaders and congressmen who gathered on Capitol Hill July 9th to lend their support to an amendment offered in the National Defense Authorization Act that is designed to protect the religious freedoms of U.S. military personnel. That's right, you don't lose your First Amendment protections when you join the military. The effort was led by Family Research Council, which recently released a report documenting incidences of hostility towards religious expression in the military. And of course, the Family Research Center itself was attacked by a would-be gunman who fortunately was stopped by a security guard. The gunman pointed out that he was attacking them because he'd been told by the Southern Poverty Law Center that they were a hate group. And they've been told that now, they've been labeled that by Pentagon memos and uh, memos from people who were lieutenant colonels and uh, others, high-ranking officials. And in this article, it points out several different incidences where there's been persecution of Christians. In 2011, officials at the National Cemetery in Houston banned Christian prayers at funeral services for military personnel. Uh, there was an ethics course. It's been part of the training for nuclear missile officers at California's Vandenberg Air Force Base for 20 years that was pulled from the curriculum because it had Christian content. And in 2012, a Pennsylvania Army Reserve Equal Opportunity Training Brief on Extremism included evangelical Christianity and Catholicism as examples of religious extremism, along with Al-Qaeda, Hamas, Islamophobia, and the Ku Klux Klan. That's what they're doing, is they're trying to take mainstream Christians and mainstream Christian groups and link them with proven hate groups and front groups. Actually, the Ku Klux Klan is a front group for the uh, U.S. government now doing uh, COINTEL operations, but linking them with known real hate groups and just basically uh, guilt by association. As long as they can keep associating them with the Ku Klux Klan, eventually people are going to see them as the same as the Ku Klux Klan. Now, in a rare instance of candor, Wells Fargo has expressed the truth about fiat currency. Take a look at this sign that they have in the Wells Fargo banks. It actually points out that your money is going to be worth a lot less in the future. So invest it now. The problem is they're telling you to invest it in dollar-denominated investments. The cognitive dissonance about the dollar never fails to amaze me, it says on this InfoWars article. People know in their bones that their dollars will be worth a lot less in the future, yet they continue to trust and cling to the dollar as a store of values. Commodities like copper, with an industrial demand, may fall in price even drastically in the midst of a global depression, but the 30% or so drop in the price of something like copper will be running hard against the U.S. government's need to inflate away the value of the U.S. dollar by having the Fed create new money to buy up more and more government debt. That's right, you're going to need to have your money in something that is not a dollar-denominated fiat currency if you're worried about it, runaway inflation. Right now, for quite some time, the government has been engaged, the Federal Reserve has been engaged, not the government, but the private Federal Reserve has been engaged in a policy of quantitative easing. 
and they've created massive amounts of currency, that currency is still on deposit largely at the banks where they are earning more money than they would if they lend it out. If interest rates go up and they start lending that money out, you can expect to see some massive inflation. So you might uh, want to invest your money in gold or even in brass and lead, something that is going to retain its value. And besides investing in commodities, you might want to invest in helping to wake people up and inform them about the Federal Reserve and other issues that the mainstream press ignores. Now, you can get a membership, Prison Planet TV. Up to 10 other people can watch the news simultaneously. It's a great way to spread the information. It's a great way to inform people and to wake them up. Are we choosing our own paths, our own destiny? Or has it been pre-selected for us? C.S. Lewis said, when training beats education, civilization dies. We need to always be cognizant of, as a free society, that information can be used as a weapon. The barrier to discovery is not ignorance. It's the illusion of knowledge. We are seen as nothing but biological androids. To gain control of education in America not for a philanthropic purpose, but to change the thinking of the American people. From the time we're very young, we're taught to, you know, worship authority basically because that's our key to survival as young children. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control. From compulsory state education to the Hollywood media brainwashing machine, we are kept in perpetual bondage to the ideas that shape our actions. And the CIA scientists could actually film people who had been surreptitiously dosed with LSD. There's a brain entrainment process that takes place. That gives the government free reign to create whatever story or narrative it wants to create. Whatever the public face of something is, whatever they're talking about publicly, there's something else over here they're probably not looking at. How to engineer the opinion of the American people so that they would fully endorse, not only endorse, but demand a war. When you watch mainline establishment television, you are putting yourself in front of the barrel of a gun. Discover the history, the present, and the future of mind control, psychological warfare, brainwashing. Are we controlled and manipulated? You bet. That's mind control par excellence. Find out how deep the rabbit hole really goes with this new groundbreaking documentary film, State of Mind. Available exclusively at Infowars.com.